So once again, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I do appreciate it. I hope everyone had a nice dinner and you're ready to go uh, for tonight because this subject is, is kind of a fun subject to me. And, and really, it, because it's so near and dear to my heart, I guess, um, the things that that really made a difference in, in my, some of the things that made a difference in my trading was the true dedication, the the diligence to study price action and to really dig into what, what that really means in studying price action. Now, one of the things that we have to understand about price action is it's a true reflection of the emotion of the market. Remember, pr the price is never wrong. The price is, you may disagree with it, but it's not wrong. And if you can kind of get get past this idea that we should be able to predict it, then we will be able to uh, pay attention or, or learn from the, the study of price action because we're really looking into, into um, the thinking of the overall market, okay? Remember, the market acts as a collective, essentially. You have the big institutions that really support stocks, but then you have all of the other, the high-frequency trading firms, the dark pools, all these different folks working together. And we're, it's a process, it's just an auction of folks bidding and back and forth as to the validity of a price and whether that is the right price for the current period of time of a stock. So the study of price action is really a study of psychology and um, understanding that emotion plays a very big part of that psychology. So one of the questions that I, I am asked all the time is, you know, when, when I take a, a chart, any chart, um, um, and I go to a chart and remove all, all the lines from a chart, I have the ability, because of years and years and years of doing this, and being able to identify very quickly, almost instantly anymore, the, the key factors of the price action, what's going on there, the, the key support levels, the key resistance levels in a chart. And I get asked often, how, do you, how can you learn to do that? And it really is just a process of practice. And one of the things, if you want to take your charting to the next level, one of the things I want to try to impress on everyone is how important it is to take the time to study. Okay, I know the process of drawing up charts and looking into the details of price action can be pretty darn dry. As a matter of fact, you kind of got to be a bit of a chart nerd to really enjoy it. I truly enjoy it, um, which makes me a really big chart nerd. But digging into those charts and practicing on a consistent basis makes you better. So one of the things that I would like, if, if you guys want to take your charting to the next level, is one of the things I, I was going to recommend is that you, you segregate out some time. Um, you know, as a business, we have to have a schedule of things that we need to do, things that we need to accomplish. And one of the things that I used to do on a regular basis when I was working full time even, is I would schedule out time to just sit and study price action. To just sit and mark up charts, chart after chart after chart, looking at the details within that chart and different time frames of the same chart. And you can find different things in that price action and one of the things that you will find is there are patterns, obviously, that repeat themselves over and over and over in the market. And if we can learn to identify those, if we can learn to see those, then we can find really good quality trades with high probability um, in them. So it's it's that practice. Um, you know, there's a video that I that I play every once in a while. In fact, I played it today at the end of Right Way Options from Arnold Schwarzenegger and how he talked about his commitment 
where he worked out in the gym five, six hours a day. He worked in construction uh, during the day, the day to have money. And then at night, he studied, went to college and studied acting so that he, he had these specific goals that he wanted to accomplish. And he makes a really good reference in, in the video. He said, just imagine taking a single subject and studying it one hour every day. Read about it one hour every day at the end of the year, how much knowledge you would have attained, how much expertise you would have, uh, have attained on that subject. So one of the things that I did is I set aside time uh, to do this. And when I was working full time, about the only time I had was usually on weekends. And so it was fairly typical for me on Sunday afternoons, after I'd kind of get all, all the things done that I needed to get done, I would sit down in front of a computer and I would spend real quality time just debt, just solidly focused on price action of the chart. And I would take a chart like this and I would look at all the different patterns in the chart and I would try to dissect out the places, the easiest trades to be made. Not every trade, but the easiest trades to be made in this chart. The places where I could really get a lot of bang for my buck. So I would, you know, pull a chart back and I would immediately plot out, you know, the really big support and resistance levels in the chart. They're pretty obvious, they're pretty easy to see. And I could mark these out relatively quickly quickly and then start looking inside those patterns where can I find where was the really easy trade where was the easy money in this chart the real easy money so uh, I, I learned to take a look at downtrends in a different way that most people um, don't think about doing I would literally mark all the downtrends in a chart and I began to notice that oftentimes when a downtrend breaks, that downtrend pops, you end up somewhere in here getting a test of that as support. And it often coincides with a place in the chart that's offering up some price support. And those became those really easy entries because when I started marking downtrends and started marking trends on the chart, it became very obvious where the easy money came in. The easy money happens just by being patient. Patient and waiting for that chart to develop the way you have seen it develop over and over and over again. And I spent some time today with in right way options talking about this pattern development and then it really it really crosses over every time frame in the chart. You can you can be a day trader and it's the same price patterns. You can be a, a position trader and it's the same price patterns. And if we look for these these conversion points where we get price, support, trend, all converging in specific areas, we can find these buy signals, these entry signals into trades relatively easily and take advantage of very nice moves in the chart. We can also, if we take the time to look, <coughs> pardon me for the cough, take the time to look at support and resistance, we can begin to identify where failure problems might start to occur, where price may start breaking down, where there's issues to begin to be worried about. So for example, I look right here at Cisco and I see a potential problem. And that potential problem is, well, first off, it's quite obvious that we failed up here several times, right? We have failed. But that's not the big problem. The big problem is in this, on, in this last pullback, this broke price support. It broke down through price support. Now it didn't break it severely. So when we see something like that, we have to be cautious in this trade. Now a lot of people are going to look at this through bullish eyes only because we're kind of trained as people. We want to be positive about the market. 
But if you look at that chart with bullish eyes only, you can you lose the opportunity of seeing the potential that this could rally right back up here into this resistance and fail at this lower high. Can you guys see with this pattern here how this could easily develop itself into a head and shoulders top? Now I can't tell you that's what's going to happen, but I can see it ahead of time. I can see it because of the study of that price action of the chart. So what I want to recommend to you is, is to take some time, take some dedicated time and go through your watch list. And, and I mean every week. Every week where you take that dedicated time, I don't care if it's 30 minutes or whatever time that you have set aside, and you go through that dedicated watch list and you start really studying price action, marking up those charts, seeing those consecutive price moves that begin to show up in, in those charts and how they begin to develop. Because that helps us in avoiding picking tops, trying to rush in here and buy this up here just before it fails. Or trying, worrying about trying to pick these bottoms because we don't have to take that high risk trade if we're just simply patient and wait for the price pattern to develop. So how does this become a good price pattern now? <coughs> we have to have some proof that this is actually going to hold a support. How do we get proof if there's supports going to be held? The stock has to rally and either test it or make a higher low. Then we have proof of a resumption of trend. And only then do we have that proof of that resumption of trend. And it's that, it's that discipline to look at a chart without the, take off that idea that I'm looking for a trade, okay? Shuck that off. We're not looking for a trade. We're looking for the details of the price action. Okay? We're looking for this inside this trade. We're looking at that psychology. What's going on with this chart? Where are the problems? And what should we avoid? Okay? Because the more you do that without trying to identify, I got to have a trade today, got to have a trade today, got to have a trade today, the more you begin to understand how price moves. And the more you begin to develop that skill, and, and that's all it is, it's a learned skill. It's not something that you can, I, I can teach you in a five minute class and you go, okay, now I got it, it's easy. Because we've all done that, right? We've all went to or studied the, the candlestick patterns and, and went to the market thinking we were armed to the teeth. Man, we've got all the skills now that we need to be successful in trading and fail miserably. So it's not just the candle itself. It's the overall price action of the chart. It's, it's what the market is trying to tell us in this story that's being written one day at a time. And it truly is that. It's that story that's developing. It's that, it's that, that, um, that fear, that greed, that emotion, the exuberance, the, the uh, you know, pain and sorrow, you know, like the old, um, the thrill of victory and agony of defeat in the old sports uh, programs on TV. Remember the, the guy on the ski slope, the agony of defeat, and they go show him tumbling off. <clears throat> off that ski slope, off that ski jump. And we see that happen, that same thing happen in the market. Now you can take this pattern right here and take it right back over to here. And I want you to notice that these patterns repeat themselves. If we look for them, we can see the distinct properties of these patterns. Can you notice right here that we had a multiple test up here? And then we had a failure, followed by another failure, followed by a lower high failure. How does that add up here? Failure, failure. Could this be a lower high failure in development here? 
And that's the, that's the, the kind of eye that you want to look at these charts as. We want to be critical of the price action of the chart. We want to be taking that time to really study these patterns, the price action, how that trade develops overall. Now, every chart's different. And that's one of the things that ex that, that's exciting about doing this stuff is that um, every chart is, is a brand new, um, uh, well, for, you know, corny description, it's, it's a bland, brand new archaeology dig where you're discovering something new. Okay. And we're studying, we're studying this story as it's developing. We're, we're watching this thing develop. And if we can remove ourselves from this idea that I have to find a trade today, then we can really begin to understand what's going on within the price action of that chart. So take some dedicated time. And I'm going to recommend you start off with your watch list. You take that watch list and take as much time as it takes. Okay? Dedicate 30 minutes or an hour or... You know, if you, you want to get really nutty like me, um, you sit down on a Sunday afternoon and um, start in, and before you know it, it's past midnight and it's time to get to sleep because you got to get up and go to work the next day. But I'd spent hours and hours and hours pouring over charts and the price action and how it develops, how it comes together. So start off with your watch list. And make sure you go through that watch list, complete it, really focus in on that price action. We're not looking for a trade. We're looking how the structure of that chart came together. What is the story that's being told in that chart? Okay. And when you can start to develop that, you, you have a, an incremental edge that you're developing in the market. Now, once you complete your watch list, don't stop. Okay, now take an index. Take the diamonds and detail out the diamonds index. Take a group of stocks and, that are priced where you want them to be priced and detail out those. Notice the ones that you know you just really don't want to trade. The ones that have price action that's erratic, it doesn't mean anything. It's, the story is just muddled, it's, it's crummy. It's, it's got like the worst author in the world trying to write this story. You know, dump that, dump that one out. We don't need that one. There's too many with very good stories being built that we can focus on. So take that time, that dedicated time, to really work through a group of charts and just keep doing it. This is a never ending project. Okay. There's a, something I learned from a, a guy a long time ago in a, oh, it was one of a self, self help tape or something like that. Um, and, and that is just one of those, one of those places that I like to be is in that never ending learning environment where I'm always trying to stretch and grow myself. In, in different places, in different things. And in charting, it's that way. It, it never ends. The market changes, it, it morphs, it develops, it, it shifts. And you can see those shifts and you can see that change beginning to happen if you focus. If you're not looking for the trade, you're looking at the price action. So start by doing that. Just really go through and detail out some charts, work through that progression. If you have to spend an hour on this chart, spend that hour on this chart. Because every hour you spend doing this, you gain knowledge about the price action, about how things are moving, how price works, how those patterns develop. And the more you grow in that, the more edge that you have to trade, to find that good buy signal. Okay. The next thing I want, I want to suggest for spending that time is start looking at um, the price patterns themselves that really identify with you. 
So for me, you guys know that my favorite two favorite price patterns, uh, trending stock, stock moves up, pulls back, finds support, buyer stepped in. That's where I want to, you know, that's where I want to get into a trade. Okay, right here. Break the downtrend, rally through, hold support, buyer step in. I want to be in that trade. Okay. Now you're going to look at a ton of charts and just wonder how in the world did I miss that trade? Right? We've all done that, right? Where we look, how did I do? I do that all the time. How did I miss that one? Well, one of the things that I used to just spend hour upon hour doing is taking that price pattern and then going back and forth over the chart over and over and over, going one day at a time, studying that price pattern, studying the price bottom, how it developed, studying the price top, how it developed. How did I miss it? What did I do? What was I thinking? Was I pushing or pressing and trying to find a trade and ignoring what the price action was telling me? Or was I being observant of what the price action was trying to describe to me? That there's, there's um, support. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, guys. There's support coming into this chart or there's resistance coming into this chart. There's problems starting to develop. Cracks starting to show up here. The other price pattern that I like tremendously is just that stock that moves up and then consolidates over the trend. Okay, and I can see that very clearly in these charts right here. So we get that stock that moves up, pulls back, finds support. There's that first pattern. It's reacting to price support and very, very close to trend. And it all depends on how you draw that trend. We could easily shift that trend to make get more connections if we did that, right? And just count these two as outliers where we got a little bit too excited. That's that volatility of that shift when we went from bearish to bullish. We create that extra volatility. Notice the price action right in here. How stressed it is. Big candles, big back and forth, big whip. And all of a sudden, when it crosses up and pulls back, finds support, how this price action calms down. It becomes more predictable, it becomes more tradable with a higher edge because it mellows out. It just calms right down. It says, we, we see the fingerprint of institutions saying, we're gonna support this. Does that make sense? And we, if we look at the candles, the candle links and the things like that, we can see the volatility of that shift from bearish to bullish. We can see that volatility from bullish to bearish. It's displayed in the chart. They're telling us there's something starting to happen here. There's a rumbling going on. There's something that's causing some stress. And if we're willing to look beyond just trying to find the trade, we can actually see that develop. And the more and more you practice this, the better it gets. Now, one of the things that I used to do, and you can do it with TC2000 a couple ways. There's a slider down at the bottom of your TC2000 that you can drag over, or you can use uh, this little hand drawing, or this uh, pan tool right here. Take your chart and drag it back. Okay? <coughs> that, pardon me, I haven't coughed all night. Now all of a sudden I start talking, I start coughing. Um, so I apologize for that. <clears throat> and then take, um, with TC2000, you use your bracket keys. Okay? You use your black bracket keys and you move one candle at a time. And take those good patterns, that pattern that you say, how in the heck did I miss that? How did I miss it? Go back before it and then go one candle at a time looking for the development of that pattern, looking for that trade. Where could I have entered that trade? How could I have noticed or recognized this pattern? And that's where you'll see me often ahead of time, I will mark a chart like this because I can see the level right here. Do you guys see the level right there in that chart? Let me straighten that up just a little bit. 
where we get all of these attempts to break through right here, we do break through and then we pull back and there's the entry. It becomes clear as a bell if you practice this over and over and over. And so I will see that pattern start to develop. I will place an alert on that chart and start waiting for that trade to come to me. Okay? Just working through the development, that story that's being written. Is this making any sense to you guys? And then don't stop there. I mean, if, if you look at it and say, man, that's just, I'm, I'm still not feeling it, then back it up and do it again. Back it up and do that again. Look for that reason why. How, how am I missing it? What am I not seeing in the chart? Where is it that I, where's my disconnection here to that price pattern and that potential entry signal? Okay, so if we continue to do that and just follow this trade up, we can watch that price action develop and notice that the same pattern begins to develop here. We get that little resting period, that pullback. I don't know that I would have caught this trade or even tried to have caught this, but notice that we did the same thing. We pop through, we pull back, we do a little test, and then buyers continue to push this up. And if we continue to develop this pattern out, we can begin to see now we're in a resting period. Notice those little doji candles. All of a sudden, all of that buying energy just kind of dried up for a little bit. All of that excitement to push this higher, we're taking a breath now. We've just run a wind sprint up a hill, up a mountain. Now we have to breathe. We have to rest. We have to see if this is the correct price. Notice that where that occurred happens to be right where we would expect it to occur. Right here. Through this price resistance zone. That, that by the way, transfers all the way over here. Transfers all the way over here. It's right there in the chart. That story is telling us we're approaching this area where we could run out of energy. And we can see that coming. So this comes back to profit taking too, right? If we really dig into that price pattern and study that, we can see where we should be taking some profits out of a trade or closing the trade down completely looking at these patterns and then just let that pattern continue to develop. Okay, where do we enter this trade? There's our pullback. Are we gonna test and hold trend? Looks like so. Where are you going to, going to enter this trade or are you going to, do you like this pattern or don't like this pattern? It's okay, that's what you need to find out. Is there a trade here for me or do I need to wait for the next one? Because you guys see me do that all the time. I won't take that trade. I'll wait for the next one. I'm perfectly happy to wait for the next one because the next one might be the perfect signal. The signal that I really want to enter that trade. That breakthrough of resistance, that pullback to test support and then buyers come back in. Okay, so study that price action. Go back and forth in these charts. Take the time to do that, particularly on your trades that you've taken, trades that you won on, trades that you've lost on. Go back in those charts. Look at that price pattern. Did you buy it at support or did you buy it at resistance? Did you let your emotion get in trying to pick a top or a bottom? Did you identify the support and resistance in the chart? And you will start to identify the mistakes that are costing you in your win-loss ratio. Those little nuances in price action that will either help you continue to make money or, or hand you that losing trade. 
So we practice this back and forth and back and forth. And we look and see if we can identify over and over and over these same patterns. We rally up. We hit that big level of resistance here. Oh, it's over here on the other side. Sorry. We hit that big level of resistance in here. We pull back and there we go. Now we're heading back up again. So it just repeats. And that's one of those things that's going to help you too. Um, how many times have you guys seen me where somebody will see a stock, okay, that it's moved up, pulled back, and then right here, there's a little buy signal. And I caution everyone on taking that buy signal to be careful with that one because it's very possible that could still move over to trend. How many of you have rushed into a trade like that, bought that signal, that first pop, thinking, oh my gosh, I finally caught it the first time. There it is, I finally caught it. But we neglected to see that the actual price support in the chart was down here and that the trend had been respected the entire way as we moved this chart up. So the high probability is that trend will continue to be respected by the chart. And we wait for that signal that produces here instead of here. Because we know there's no rush. We don't have to rush if we study the price pattern of the chart. Making sense? So put some time in, in practicing those and identifying those individual price patterns. And you may look at Cisco and say, I hate Cisco. I don't, I have no interest in Cisco whatsoever. I wouldn't want to trade that for anything. Fine. Find the chart that you have an interest in and say, how did I miss that? How did I get past this and not see this trade? Okay. If you like day trading, just change it to your day trading time frame. The same price patterns will develop in the day trading time frame. I mean the exact same price patterns will develop. If you like position trading, the exact same price patterns will develop in a longer term chart as they do in a short term chart, as they do as an intraday chart. And the reason is, is because it's the psychology of the market. As human beings, we do the same things repetitively over and over. We want to see the same things over and over and over. We look for certainty. Okay. And that's one of the things that hold us back as traders is because we want absolute certainty, but we're not doing the work to bring us that certainty. That certainty that this is my price pattern. This is a pattern I see. I recognize this. I know that when I make this trade, I win the majority of these trades. That's how you develop the certainty. Is the practice, the work through that pattern saying, this pattern pays me. Okay. So you have to develop that certainty with that pattern through the practice of that pattern. Here's the other thing that I would really truly recommend to everyone. Don't try to be the master of every single pattern out there. You can't do it. You can't do it. Think about how anything is built today. Everyone has a specialty. It makes it more efficient. It makes it higher quality. Because everyone has their little niche. Everyone has that place where they're efficient at it. Don't try to be the jack of all trades. Because then you end up mastering none. Work to master one or two really good patterns in the market and continue to repeat that pattern over and over and over. Watch for it. Study it. Get so you can't hardly miss it. You see it coming. That's the practice that I'm talking about. Spending that quality time in front of that chart, really studying the patterns. And remember, all patterns develop differently. 
all bottoms are different, all tops are different in a chart. Okay, enough on that subject. Now, <clears throat> let's take this one step further. Yeah, when you move, you use the back bracket keys to move one step forward. You can drag this chart back using the pan or you can use a slider and then you use, use the bracket key on your keyboard and that moves that chart with TC2000 one day forward at a time. And you can go backwards using the back bracket key one day or one period I should say at a time because if you use a 15 minute chart it's going to go by period. If you use an hourly chart it's going to go by an hourly period. Okay. No, it does not work on TOS. I'm with Nigel. Stop trying to take something, you know, a broker's charts are, are okay, they're, they're sufficient. Okay, but this is our business. If you can afford to do it, invest in your business. Here, I'll give you the coupon. TC2000 saves you 25 bucks. Just get it done. Invest in your business, invest in a good tool to make you efficient. Okay? Your drawing tools are also a little bit cumbersome on TC2000. Or I mean on, on Thinkorswim, but I mean they can be used. <coughs> Don't get me wrong. Um, you can make anything work for you, but it's just more work. How many workarounds do you want to do? Or do you just want to make it easy? Okay. So now let's take this one step further. And we talked a little bit about this today in Right Way Options. If you like using indicators, let's identify those indicators that help us confirm these price patterns. Ignore every other indicator out there that doesn't help you confirm that price pattern. Okay, because what, what good is it? You spend all of this time to study price action and now we're going to use just all these wild indicators out there that does nothing to confirm the price pattern. Why would we want to do that? It's a waste of time. Look for a set of indicators that confirm. Let me show you something that's very, very simple. It's so simple that most people don't even want to look at it. And I don't understand it. I could make money with this chart and never have a candle on it. Can you guys see from this chart, remove the lines here, can you guys see from this chart when this stock started to reverse and get bearish and reverse and get bullish? Can we see when we get the crossovers, the potential entry places in this chart that show right here on this very simple moving average chart? I'm telling you guys, if we stopped focusing on the hard right edge all the time, spend a little more time working with a simple chart like this to help us confirm those entry points, we would make a lot more money. 
Because what do we do? We learn something about, oh, there's a shooting star. Oh, my gosh. I, uh, and, the, and we panic. Oh, look at what's happening forming right now. We, we have this bounce in the market. Oh, my gosh. And you take this emotional decision and you bail on a trade. Or you, uh, how many has ever made a, an, an, ent an entry into a trade? Well, everybody has. Made an entry into a trade. You bought the entry, started to move up sold it real quick because it started to fall apart and you lost money on the trade to come back two or three days later and see you were exactly right on the trade. It just kept going up. Right? But we let our emotion dictate our trade. If we study the price pattern, we know the price pattern works predominantly. Over and over and over the price pattern works. But we let that intraday wiggling around cause us to thrash about, and we're our own worst enemy in this, right? Because we let emotion get in the way of a good trade. Everyone in this room has picked stocks before that you look back and you just want to, you know, tie up a noose and hang yourself because I, I can't believe I picked this trade. Look at it. it. It's up $40. Right? We've all had those. And we're not in them because we let our emotion, we didn't first trust the pattern because we haven't studied the pattern. We haven't taken the time to build the certainty that that pattern works to stick with it. Right? And then we didn't follow it through. We didn't stick with our plan. We didn't stick with our trade. And it ended up costing us in the end. So taking that charting to the next level is finding maybe some confirmation tools that help you identify that trend, that pattern, how it works. We can see it in bottoms. We can see it in tops. We can see how that pattern develops and repeats over and over in charts. That stocks just can't go up forever but they have a very recognizable pattern if you pay attention to it. If I draw this line, you'll suddenly see it. Break the downtrend, hold price support, buyers start coming in. Break the downtrend, hold price support, buyers start coming in. Break the downtrend, hold price support, buyers start coming in. It happens over and over and over in the market. Okay, so sticking with that trade, sticking with that pattern, building confidence in the pattern that you're trading because you've studied the minutia in it. You've, you've, you've become that nerd like me where you, you've become confident that this pattern pays off more often than not. I'm going to stick with the pattern no matter what the little intraday swing might be causing trouble. We stay with the trade because that is our pattern. Okay, so look for those simple, simple indicators that can help you do that. <coughs> <coughs> and we can see this if we just take this to an index. Can we see in this index chart on the daily the confusion that's going on in this chart? Does this look like a good systematic move that we can count on? Or does this look like, wow, a mess? Right? 
There's no cohesion here. There's no, there's nothing in this chart that can give us confidence in the move. That's why the market is as jumpy as it is right now. It's just like, yeah, what Greg says, it's just a mess. But we can see when all of those things have happened in the past, where they start to resolve. We break the town trend, we hold support. We hold support and prices start to smooth out. Okay, it's not an uncommon event. It happens all the time. In the market, we can see it if we take a look at it. If you take a look at this on a weekly chart, you can see the same thing plays out here on the longer term basis. Break the downtrend, hold support. It's the same thing over and over and over. Break the downtrend, hold support. Repeats over and over and over, no matter what time frame you trade. And we can always tell when the market has started to turn from bullish to bearish. Because all we have to do with this chart is cross over to the 34 EMA and hold it. When it's on the wrong side of the 34 EMA, should we be trying to trade that for long trades? Trying to predict when this is going to come up? No, that's when we set up these great shorts. When those problems start to occur, those warning shots start to happen. Okay. Do you think those warning shots are starting to happen here in Cisco? Does this right in here give you a lot of confidence in this trade yet? Yeah, it is hard to trust right now, Jen. But here's the cool thing about that. If we're patient, it will resolve itself. Okay? It will resolve itself. Eventually, it will resolve itself. That's what the market does. We will figure this out. The market will figure this out. And we will eventually pick that direction and we'll start to move out of there. Okay. Now another chart that could be helpful to you guys <coughs> that's very, 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 it's very, looks really complicated and it looks really impressive, but it's actually very simple. This is a guppy chart. This is a chart, the guy that came up with this, his name is actual, his name is Guppy. Okay, last name is Guppy. And he would look at a chart like this with all these moving averages. And by the way, write this down real quick. Get your pen ready, I'm gonna read them off. Okay, the purple one. The purple lines or blue lines, I don't know how you see them, is a, and they're all exponential moving averages. There's a three, a five, an eight, 10, a 12, and a 15. Those are your exponential moving averages for the short term. The longer term is the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, and the 60. Now the only thing I've done different in here, the longer terms, I made the 30, the 30 moving average a little bit wider, okay? Gave it a little more weight. That's kind of the midpoint in here. Now, using this chart, can we see very clearly where Cisco became a smooth, simple, easy trade to make? We can see that, right? 
Can we see when the chart becomes messy and junky and confused, directionless? We can see it, right? Do we want to be risking our money during these phases? Does it make sense to be risking our money during these phases? No, it does not. Everyone saw me talk about this trade the other day. And I said, right over here, if Cisco can actually pop out and hold up here, I'll be interested in this trade. Not trying to pick it up here, not trying to predict it's gonna break out. I said exactly that. This has to hold this high or low, pop through that resistance, hold support, and then show me buyers. Then I'm interested in this trade. That's a big difference of me looking at this and saying, hey, what do you think? There's a higher low here. Should I just buy this right now? Because I'm ignoring what the chart is telling me, this story that's being told here. Right? I'm trying to predict that this time will be different. That after all of these attempts to break through, that this time will be different. Now, you can make money from time to time predicting that, right? In fact, you can make money just enough times to make you think you can do this. And when I say that, look at your win-loss ratio. What's your win-loss ratio? Those of you who say, I make money doing that all the time. What's your win-loss ratio and why are you here? Because if you were making money on that all the time, you wouldn't be struggling as a trader. So don't fool yourself. Yes, we can have luck make us money from time to time. But that has nothing to do with the skill of trading. We all have an opportunity for luck. But the skill is to wait for the trade. To be patient for the trade, to get the confirmation in the position that says, hey, we're, this time is different. We did break through, we did hold support, and the buyer stepped in. That's where the magic happens. That's where the good stuff happens in the trade. But we have to recognize it. We have to get over this idea that I just have to press and push and shove every single day trying to squeeze out a penny in a trade, trying to squeeze out something here in a pattern that we don't even understand. But because we haven't taken the time to study it. We see a candle and think that is the key. That's not the key. It's a clue, but it's not the key. We have to put the whole package together. Okay. So studying that price action, studying those price patterns, really working over and, and defining what you're trying to do as a trader, okay? You have to do that soul searching. You know, I, I, I do coaching sessions quite a bit. And one of the major conversations that I have with folks always is what kind of a trader are you? What do you want to be? It's really common. I find people trying to day trade that just absolutely hate it. I can't stand this. It just makes me crazy. I just, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an emotional mess. I'm trying, I, I, they're at their wits end. And they just need somebody to say, it's okay. You don't have to trade like that. It's not mandatory. Okay, we can slow it down. 
See, if we study the price patterns and know that they repeat themselves over and over and over, do we have an edge? Have we gained a small edge by studying that price pattern, that price action, that trend, that support, that resistance? Have we increased our edge on that trade? Have we given ourselves a higher probability of winning when we see that pattern? Right? And those confirming indicators will help us see that. <coughs> those really simple indicators. We don't need big fancy, you know, we don't have to have stochastics. We don't have to have MACD. We don't have to have <coughs> market profile, all of those kind of things. If you find them to be helpful and they're proving to confirm the price pattern, fine. But oftentimes, what you're going to find is that it's going to give you a contradiction to what you know in the price pattern. Keep it simple. Now, I don't care if you use this. I don't care if you decide to use the guppy. The guppy is just nothing more than showing you trends, <coughs> showing you that simple pattern that we're trending, that we're moving in a direction, that things have started to shift. WBA, we've talked about this as a possible rounded bottom breakout. Okay, if you like rounded bottom breakouts in charts, go to that chart, study that price pattern. How does that develop? How do the moving averages come together without looking for the trade? How does that come together what does it mean when we get all of these moving averages crossing, holding in one particular area? Study it, go back and find out when it happened before. How did that work out? When it rolls over from the top, how did that work? How did the moving averages move? How did they develop and give you clues to the dangers in that chart? Once again, we're not looking for a trade. We're looking to study what this chart is trying to tell us, what that price pattern is trying to tell us. And if we look back and we put the price action on the chart, now let's study the price. What is the pattern that we look for? Let's go to the naked chart. The break of the downtrend, the holding of support, the breaking through price resistance, buyers trying to hold here. It's the same repeating pattern that we talk about over and over and over. Now, if we see our trend here, do we have to rush into this trade and just say, oh my gosh, hurry up, I gotta buy this today? I see this happen all the time, all the time. People rush in here, they buy that candle, the stock wiggles around here for several days. They get bored with the trade or they get worried about one particular candle pattern. Oh my gosh, see that shooting star, I gotta close the trade. They close the trade. The stock does what it's supposed to do. It consolidates and holds and then the buyers step in. And you've beat yourself up over here when all you had to do was be patient and wait for that pattern that you've studied to develop. So I got to do. And you can see what I've done, placed an alert right here. That alert can move, by the way. It's not set in stone. If the price pattern in here changes a bit, I can move that alert. Imagine if this had some major selling that came into it. Boom, sell, sold off pulled back down into here. That's when everybody quits looking at it, right? Oh, see, I can't do this. I don't know anything about this stuff. But what if it does this?
bounces around in here for a few days and then pops out. Shouldn't this alert at that point be down here waiting for that next entry into the trade? It's holding trend. But we gave up on the trade before it ever became a trade because we had to rush. We were just in this big mad rush. Oh, I got to hurry up and get a trade today. Is this making sense, guys? And you guys will find this repeat itself over and over and over if you study a chart like this. Great example of that today. McDonald's. Here's my drawing. Here's my alert day. How many bail on this trade here? Because they can't stand, they didn't hold their plan. What was the plan in this trade? Nobody buys this with the idea, hey, I hope I get a one day move and I can close that trade. Right? Why don't we hold that? If we studied the pattern, we know this is pretty typical. We break through a new resistance, and sometimes it doesn't happen the next day, but it's pretty typical. We break resistance, what do we do? We test a support, and it held. Don't close that trade. Close that trade when it follows through to the downside. But we had no follow through. A bearish engulfing candle means nothing if there's no follow through. Just like it didn't mean anything right here. There was no follow through. So trust your pattern and trust the trade and stick with the setup that you made. Now, if you've planned the trade correctly, you had a risk in this trade. You, you made the agreement with the market, okay, I can risk X amount of dollars. There's my stop loss. I've risked, I'll risk X amount of dollars on this trade when this signal pops. Then why would we change, all of a sudden change it up when we know it's a typical price action for the stock to break resistance and then test at some point in time, test it as support. But we don't know that, we, we, don't, we haven't confirmed that to ourselves because we're not studying the price action of the chart. We're trying to will out a trade here saying, I gotta be right because that was a buy signal. It's gotta be right. No, it doesn't. But we have a price pattern that produces more often than not. So let's stay with the trade that we, until that trade proves itself to be wrong. All we have to do is wait for a follow through, right? Follow through to the downside, hey, that trade broke. Got a problem here. If we break back down through here, the chances of us breaking this support are pretty good. Okay, now you've got justification to dump the trade. Because we start breaking trend, we start failing in here. But we got no follow through. There's no reason to close that trade. Does that make sense, guys? So taking that chart, taking your ch charting to the next level means that really solid dedication to the craft of trading. And that means really focusing in. And you know, here's one of the reasons that I believe most people fail in trading. And you guys know the stats. About 90% of people that trade lose money. Why do they lose money? because they never take the time to study. They go to a class, they learn a candle pattern, they think, oh, that's magic, and it's not.
the magic become, comes in our relationship with studying that chart and studying that price action and seeing that chart for what it is, not for what we want it to be. Okay? We are not in competition with the stock. We're in competition with other traders. A lot of people look as that stock, it's an adversarial relationship. And they look at it that way because they've never studied what the chart is telling them. The story that's being written. And if we just step back for a second, not try to make a trade, look at the story that's being written. Do you guys see how much confidence there is in this stock when we test? Test, 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 fail, fail, recover, hold as support. Isn't that all that black candle was right there? A test to hold support. Doesn't that tell us stock wants to go up? Institutions aren't selling this. But it's only going to tell us that if we look at the chart, the price itself, what the price is saying, not the hard right edge. That story is being written as it's happening. We don't know how the, what the conclusion of that day's story is going to be until it has concluded. Make sense? So I hope you guys got something out of this tonight. And I hope you'll maybe look at a chart in a little bit different way. Not, not with that angst or that adversarial relationship that I've got to press, I've got to force, I've got to, you know, um, it, it, it's this battle that we do. And we're really doing the battle with ourselves. Okay. We're battling ourselves and our emotion. That's what's happening. We're not battling the market. We don't even know what we're trading because we're rushing in emotionally. We're chasing things emotionally. We've, we're trying to make up stories for ourselves rather than reading the story that this chart is telling us. Um, uh, trend angles, angles of a trend. Um, if you look at a bunch of charts, you're going to find out the answer to this on your own. When a chart gets an excessive move, that really steep angle, it's usually short-lived. When that steep angle occurs, we get longer, protracted, ugly, sideways moves and pullbacks. It takes a long time after we get those big rushed up moves. The market has more work to do to consolidate that. Okay? When we get those nice steady angles in the chart, not so steep, we get those smoother, steadier price action that comes out of that chart. Okay? And, and really, it's common sense when you think about it. What happens when we, when we get too excited about anything? Right? Too much of a good thing is a bad thing, right? Isn't that what your mom told you when you were cramming candy in your mouth on Halloween night? Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. You get the sugar high, you rush, 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 and then crash. Yeah, blizzards would do the same thing. That's right. <clears throat> um, Mike, I use volatility stop. Like I told you guys, before I really even started prevent, presenting volatility stop to you guys, I studied it for a year. I tried it in all different 
all different price patterns. I tried it at all different time frames. I tried it at all different kinds of settings. Okay, what I was looking for was not the volatility stop to confirm to me the trade. I was looking for the volatility stop to help me confirm what the price action is telling me. The reason I brought it to people is it helps, it will help you if you study it, it'll help you identify support, resistance, and trend. It will help you if you're struggling with how to set a stop loss, where to set that stop loss. Volatility stop will help you with that. But it's not the solution. It's an addition to your study of price action. Just like every indicator. I have said this so many times and I'm going to say it a million more times before I'm gone. No indicator is a buy sell signal. No indicator is a buy sell signal or a reason to enter a trade. The price action is the reason to enter the trade. There's never been an indicator that ever paid you a penny and they never will. It's the movement of the price that makes you money. So study the price. Use the indicator to help you support what you see. Is it making sense? Is it working? Okay. Indicators are an aid to help you identify price. Okay. Take care, everyone. Hey, if you're not going to be around tomorrow, remember the market closes tomorrow at 1 p.m., Eastern time. If you're not going to be around, well, have a great holiday. Hope you got something out of this tonight. I hope, I hope you take some of this and you start looking at charts a little bit different way. It's not an adversarial relationship. They're your friend if you let them be the friend. Okay. Everyone take care. Have a great evening. Thank you guys. I appreciate you a ton. Thanks for coming tonight. Everyone take care of yourselves. Have a great evening. We'll see you uh, bright and early tomorrow morning with the morning market, market prep.